This is hunting for purple streetlights in Kansas City, video 325. Um, I didn't do a dash video with this, I'm just going to call it 325. This is at 154th Terrace and 155th Street. Uh, I have seen this purple streetlight previously. It's probably been, I don't, I don't know, I want to say like maybe two months or something like that since I looked at this LED panel. It could have been longer, I'm not sure. It's definitely a bluer. Before I go over there though, I want to check something because I'm going to see... I'm wearing glasses, so sometimes it's hard to tell here if... I just want to check just in case one of these things is turning purple on this thing. Even though it's not even an LED panel. Yeah, none of those look like they're defective. I've never seen a case like that for those kinds of lights, but after seeing the sidewalk lights that I saw back in Hunting for Purple Streetlights in Kansas City video, I want to say, I don't know, it could have been 300, yeah, I can't quite remember. It's like 317, 315, somewhere back there, maybe 318, uh, over by, sorry guys, um, Oh, it's bad. I can't remember the name of the street right now. Like 635, I-635 becomes Metcalf. Metcalf Avenue and um, basically 161st Terrace or Street. No, sorry, 61st, like 61st Street, I think. Um, or Terrace over by the Target where they had those other defective ones that are... And then also a different kind of defective light that's not even the same as the sidewalk lights over by it at the FedEx, like right next to those lights, which are also in the same, serving the same trough as the ones that are on the Shawnee Mission Parkway Metcalf Junction. It can't be, guys, I don't think this stuff's an accident. Maybe that one particular example could be a coincidence, but after seeing what I've seen, it's not unexpected. And I just keep seeing motivations for water with how these things are set up. So right now, that's uphill of this. In fact, I was just up there. Um, water can take that path, but still there's like more water up there than over here. And this is gonna feed down, like if something were to hit right here that was chemical, it's gonna follow a path that goes down into to the Blue River eventually. You can look at this on a map and see. I'm going to zoom in on this LED panel and I want to show what I expect, at least. I have not seen this yet. I expect almost every LED on this on one of the panels to be blue and the other one to still show maybe just barely an odds and evens pattern. Or all of them, I guess, have already changed, guys. So this backs up what I expected, at least, that they would all eventually turn purple, guys. So they put two batches together or something. One batch legs behind the other. So like half of them will turn purple basically before the other half. Not, not necessarily where all, all of one half has to turn before the other, but where it's slowed down to where at max basically is not gonna ever just really quickly turn purple for people to notice. Most people will not notice this they want this to be a slow process, and then they say it's a factory defect, okay? That's what I, I strongly believe that. Believe that just sounds stupid. After you see enough examples, they're lying to us when they say that they're not on purpose. No, guys, they are on purpose. If you just keep looking at their locations, you'll know they're on purpose. What's interesting, though, is most people probably just think, well, yeah, it's on the interstate. It's gonna be on purpose but they don't want to tell us. They just say that they're a defect when they're really just tracking us, right? Well, A, you should ask yourself why the fuck they would even need them. They have cameras, guys. They even turn lights off in areas with cameras for some reason. In fact, one good example is US-71. If you take it, they have interstate cameras and for some reason, some of those lights are off down there towards like way before you get to Harrisonville. But like, if you just go south, Right now, this is in Kansas City, by the way. We're by US 71. You should really ask yourself 
questions about like why the narrative would make any sense here uh, I'm gonna look at that other purple or sorry the other street light over there I don't know if it's a purple street light by the way that one is still doing the same thing I want to see if there are any other ones turning at this point over here um, because of the traffic actually I'm not going to walk all the way over I'm just gonna go like this see if we do see any purple LEDs on this thing Yeah, I see no indication. So these are all possibly not even defective lights. None of them have seemed to have changed, guys. It's just this one has turned all the way blue. Both, ha both the odds and the evens are now all purple on this thing. It was predestined, yet they were still two different kinds of LEDs somehow, like two different batches. One that would turn slower, one that would turn faster, and now that thing is completely purple. It looks very violet on the ground. I did this mostly just to collect that data. If you want to learn more about this, um, you, can, you can look at my Facebook, guys. Look at my Facebook, and I'm posting all the examples that I've seen. It takes a lot of time, guys. It takes a lot of time. And I have not done all of them. I have not done them all in order yet. I'm still looking at the ones in Florida and I keep seeing even ones where there the water, even the ponds and the lakes are aligned with where the purple straight lights are that I found. So it's not even just topography guys. This is absolutely about water. I'm convinced as heck about it. And the only way to possibly the only way to be convinced about it is to look at it for yourself, but it takes a lot of time. If you just keep looking though, you'll see they were shrewd about it. They do stuff like this, okay? This is still not a counter example to targeting water. If you look closely, this will go down into the, um, I'm gonna say coffee, there might be a coffee creek. Can't remember the name of the creek though. There's also coffee creek though in Overland Park, if that's the case. Uh, look at this on a map. This is topographically dynamic. This will feed into the Blue River. It's still even uphill over there on a topographic map. Water can still come down and wash anything that's in there and go down. Although I would say this, we do have a trough on this side too. So most of the water is gonna take this route though. It does look like that. But it's not necessarily a counter example. It could really probably take both troughs. In fact, when I look at this, yeah, it's more that direction if it were to fall directly on the street light, but if something came down and hit this area with chemicals, or before it came down, it blew up or something like that and chemicals spill all over the ground, guys. That could kill you from breathing them and also kill you in the water. And poison our water. This would not necessarily be a good place. It would, it would take a route that eventually goes into the creek. But I, I noticed something about topography with these that I don't think can be an accident. I just don't know how to... There's not a, like a fail or pass kind of test that I can really use for where these lights are like the for instance it could be farther from the trough in some cases and there could just be a shallow trough that still goes into something versus a very steep like very um pronounced like like steep trough right and in that case you'd want to put you'd want to look at a distance that's closer and i don't know how to come up with the way to test this to, to say okay this is pass or this is failed this is like how many cases that are this that are passing and versus the other number of cases. And then to actually come up with an average by looking at all the street light poles and deciding what the average distance is. For example, what they expected, like the expected value. That's not simple for me to do. I wanna find, you know, hopefully somebody who keeps seeing this starts to care about it. By the way, we have taller grass down there, a grain. Like if you pay attention to this stuff on satellite, you'll see that a lot of times this stuff is still though, like right here, this isn't really necessarily applicable, but actually it could be, depending on the radius of what would, what an attack would be chemically, like how it would spread out. But I keep seeing stuff like this and topography that's dynamic by these things. 
like not just in in uh, Missouri where they have lots of hills no also in Minnesota and even things like if you just look at like the see like the color of the ground like where it's drier it's whiter uh, versus it's darker where there's more water like things like that you can look at on a satellite map and look down and these things like point to like where they put the lights like for example in um, Brownsdale Minnesota where that that light is you can even just look at the field and see how the water flows into the river it's in a watershed guys they care about water even in Hayfield Minnesota on a school building they had some of these that were by the entrances which really doesn't constitute a very large signal I would think from the air but they still even have it on one of those and if you look at it it's at the beginning of a watershed guys they care about water with these things all right that's all I'm gonna say in here um, this is what it looks like right now I parked up there for a little bit because uh, I just got off of work and I look over at uh, a couple buildings over um, and that's it and also we have that mercury vapor light that's in that trough there all right I'm gonna stop this video